Well, hello, it's me again, gentlemen. Uh, I say gentlemen because I've looked at the figures and it says 100% male viewers. So if there's some ladies out there, uh, you're very welcome. But it, I don't know, it seems to be a hobby that attracts men rather than ladies. Right, well, what have we got here? We have a realistic DX160, probably from about 1975. And I bought this... Uh, ooh, Probably just before the year 2000, so it's 2019 now. So I've had it to kicking around for 19 years. And with the intention of uh, restoring this and um, seeing how it performs. And I also bought the DX150. And I also bought the DX120, which is also known as the Star Patrol. And I also bought the DX300. I also bought the DX302. I also bought the DX394, isn't it? And we're going to do some comparisons on these um, shortwave receivers. I don't think we ever had the DX120 in the UK. Um, and most of these, I've, I've, I bought every one of them off eBay at the time. And um, most of them have come from the United States. But having said that, I've dug this one out. And it's got a UK 13 out mains plug on it. But we will change that plug because it's got the non-shrouded pins. So... And we'll make sure it's got the three amp fuse in it as well. Um, you know, I, I wouldn't have paid more than thirty pounds for any of these um, at the at the time. Um, probably paid a bit more for the DX three nine four. All sold to me, guaranteed not working. And this one, whoops, always bump into the camcorder. Is a fantastic candidate because not only has it got that awfully scratched front, which we can deal with, it doesn't have a back, so we can see the works. And it's got this modification, which has had the um, the antenna screw connectors removed and SO239 is not brilliantly uh, put in its place. I think we can probably put matching nuts and bolts in that. Um, if you've been watching the videos sequentially, you'll remember we did part one of building a uh, QRP uh, 1.8 megs um, AM and CW transceiver uh, starting last weekend where I showed you Mr Chippy drilling his finger and he's gone back to Bradford where he lives he works here at weekends and um, we need a receiver when I've got that up and running I need a receiver to actually listen on and this goes down there so I thought this is a good chance a good time to do one of the realistics so I've chosen the three uh, the, the 160 I don't know why I've chosen the 160. I know nothing about these things apart from they were made by GRE. And, you know, you know, you all know that amateur radio, like a lot of things, is full of, of snobbishness. And we, I haven't got any time for any of that. So, um, I've been doing this an awful long time. And this is going to be the main station receiver. Now, you know... These are made by GRE, General Research Electronics in Japan. And GRE uh, were making receivers for TRIO as it was. I don't know whether it was always TRIO in other countries, but it was in the UK. And then they came in with the, the Kenwood name later. So, you know, people will have these £10,000 radios. But when you open them up, there's still SRBP printed circuit boards. And I'm not paying huge money for things with SRBP printed circuit boards. So we'll see how this works out when I've done it. And it's going to be aligned with an inch of its life. Now I've downloaded the service manual. And this is the late version of this radio. Because the serial number is 7000 and something. And it says here for the UK it's 4, 000, uh, 429,000 onwards. So we're on 7000 and something for this. So we've got the service manual here. So we know how it should perform. We've got the alignment details, and I'll be doing that with 39 alignment procedures. So this is going to be some fun. Somebody's written some things in there for some modifications. We don't do modifications. I like things to be as they should do. And you can see someone's also marked the manual for changing the electrolytics. And that is what we're going to do before we plug it in. I also downloaded and printed off the instruction book so that... Um, I'll actually know how to work it as well. Isn't that exciting? Yes, I'll read that in bed later. So I'm going to open it up. 
Okay, so as you can see, we've opened it up and yeah, it's got dust inside it. I'll probably put the case through the company dishwasher. I'll probably put the front panel through the company dishwasher across with the knobs. And we'll touch up that paint, uh, which looks a bit awful. And you can see the coil pack board and the uh, tuning capacitor and whatever that tuning capacitor is, because I've not read the manual yet. I've never seen one of these before in my life. And uh, I just feel without a back, it's a bit vulnerable to the delicate uh, wiring on the ferrite rod there. And underneath, what have we got? Obviously, the underneath. Hmm. Oh, so the it's 220 volts or 115 volts. That's interesting. So I wonder if some of the other models I've got, like the DX150 and the DX120, which I've bought from the United States 20 years ago, I wonder if they have a 230 volt transformer when I actually open them up. Oh, well, that'd be interesting to see. Anyway, it all looks, it, to be honest, it doesn't look messed about with, apart from those SO239s, uh, which don't look um, that awful, but uh, I think we'll be getting rid of those um, self-tappers and, and replacing them with nuts and bolts, uh, and ones that actually match. Uh, so what I'm going to do first, when I've changed electrolytics, is I'm going to go through this for dry joints because I am aware that this has um, double-sided kind of print that it's on this the coil pack board, isn't it? I just need to check that that's actually going to be spot on. I say I, pro I was promised when I bought this that it didn't work and it's 20 years ago so I can't give them negative feedback if it does work when they promised me it didn't. So we'll stop the camcorder and I will change all these electrolytic capacitors without powering this up because at this age they're going to need changing. And it's such a, well there's probably 16 of them, but I mean, hey, what's it going to cost me? Three pounds? Something like that. Right, well, the next day we spent two half hour sessions on changing those electrolytic capacitors. And there's a nice big bundle of them you will see on the bench. If I can just move the uh, camera down. Oh, yes. So I've just put a new plug on the end. Because the newer ones have the shrouding around the pins and that's fitted with a 3 amp fuse. And we're going to switch it on and we'll see what happens. Ha! Ah, we need to plug a speaker in. I can see two out of the three lamps are lit anyway, so we'll try again. No idea whether this does anything now. Well, that's promising, isn't it? So that's band A. So that's long. I've got no external error, this is just on whatever the ferret rods are doing. It helps if we turn the RF gain up as well. So let's go for band B, which is medium wave broadcast. doing something band C now I presume these I've not read the the books I presume we need an external aerial for these others I'll just put a bit of wire onto the uh, socket and just see whether that does something for us. Okay, so now we're going back to band C and with three feet of wire into the back, we've, we've clearly got some noise there, so it's, uh, it's working. Not heard anything. 
uh, Van D. Can't say I'm hearing anything there. Band E. Um, that covers 27 megs, so I could see whether it will slope detect one of our handhelds. So I just thought I'd dig out one of our um, dead simple um, handhelds here. So this is on channel 20 UK, so that's 27.79.125. So using the band spread control, I quickly tuned it in and I can kind of slope detect it. This is FM, the radio is AM, but it's clearly receiving fine. So I'm sure if I put this on a long wire aerial or something tuned, uh, we'd get some decent results. Anyway, what we're going to do in part two um, is we're going to align this. Now, meanwhile, behind the scenes, I'm going to take this front off and we'll sort out the uh, the, the damage there and clean the knobs and that. So it'll change that to that lamp behind the band spread. So, uh, yeah, capacitor's done. Radio is basically working. And um, we'll see you in part two.